the, of course, the war in the Pacific theater. One of the gentlemen who helped work on the bomb, uh, part of the Manhattan Project, is with me in studio as we uh, observe Veterans Day today. His name is Dan Gillespie, 85 years young now, and uh, continuing to tell his story about what he did, at least I guess what he, he can tell me about the Manhattan Project, and, and what he thinks about the use of the bomb, uh, the bombs that brought about the end of the war. Mr. Gillespie, uh, welcome to 630 WBMQ. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So, Manhattan Project, you went into the Army uh, when? Was this 1943 when you went into the Army? Well, it was uh, in the 40s, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I find my way there uh, after being uh, deferred in college. I was in school Mm -hmm. when when this was happening at the University of Michigan. And I didn't get get in there until uh, after the deferment and after I got into business. Uh, I was supposed to get some, I was deferred in order to work on uh, projects that would involve a chemical engineering background. So after after that, then uh, I, it came my time to serve and I was inducted into the Army then. And because of your chemical engineering background in college, is is that why you ended up uh, where you ended up in New Mexico? That's exactly right. It uh, they uh, pulled me off of uh, basic training and uh, said uh, I had applied for anything that was available, which was OCS and uh, Army specialized training. Mm-hmm. And so they said uh, you've been accepted in both of those. What which, which would you like to do? So I said I don't know, sir. Uh, it's a little second lieutenant there, and uh, I said, what would you suggest? And he said, well, he said, I had the same choice, so I went to ASTP first and then went to OCS. So I said, I'll do the same thing, sir. So that's how I ended up at uh, in ASTP out at Ohio State University. Dan Gillespie <clears throat> is with us here on News Talk 630 WBMQ, veteran of World War II, as we honor our veterans on this officially day after mm-hmm. Veterans Day, and he worked on the uh, Manhattan Project in New Mexico, the development of the bomb. Now, now once you got out to, to New Mexico, how, how much did you know about what was going on, or did you learn pretty quickly what exactly you were working on? Well, of course, I didn't know anything as I approached the area. Uh, I went to Santa Fe and uh, was put on a bus uh, that went out of town and up into the mountains, and uh, suddenly came to a, uh, a guard gate and um, presented my credentials, and I was admitted and uh, found I was at Los Alamos National Laboratory, mm-hmm. which uh, was the place where they put together the first bomb and uh, did a lot of research there. Now, you worked not, correct me if I'm wrong, you worked on the second bomb, did you? Or did you, did you work on both the, the first bomb, the bomb on, that was dropped on Hiroshima, and the second bomb dropped on Nagasaki, or did you only work on uh, one of those? I only worked on one of those. It was mm-hmm. called the Fat Man Bomb. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that was uh, uh, needed to be tested. Uh, the first bomb was a gun-type bomb, and it was a slam dunk. They, they knew that would work. Mm-hmm. But the second bomb, uh, they didn't know whether it would work or not and decided they better test it first. So I, uh, I was there to work on the initiator for the Fat Man bomb. And that's the first one that was uh, put off at Trinity, mm-hmm. they call it. And uh, that, that was uh, now 62 years and four months ago. Mm. That's something else. I bet a lot of people don't know that there were two different types of <clears throat> technologies in those bombs, that it was a different type of technology used in the, the Hiroshima bomb than it was on the Nagasaki bomb. Not a lot of people know that. Yes, well, that's true. And uh, as I said, the, the gun type, no one had any doubts that that would work. Mm-hmm. So they didn't bother to test that one. But uh, on the uh, Im- implosion type, they felt they had to do, do the test work. And that's why they had the test at uh, Alamogordo, New Mexico, on the j- July the 16th in 1945. Hmm. Very special Veterans Day uh, interview with Dan Gillespie, World War II veteran. He actually did work on the bomb at Los Alamos in New Mexico. And he's been telling us about the fact that the technologies on 
The first bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Uh, that was a different technology than the second bomb that was uh, built uh, for Nagasaki or eventually dropped on Nagasaki. And that was the bomb that uh, Mr. Gillespie worked on when he was in the Army back uh, during World War II. Once you found out what you were working on, Mr. Gillespie, and, and, and what it was going to be used for, that it was going to be dropped uh, on a target in Japan and cause widespread damage, both military damage and uh, civilian casualties, in order to bring about a ostensibly a, a quicker end to the war so we wouldn't have to invade the Japanese mainland, uh, were there any reservations on your part? And in hindsight, ha- have there ever been any reservations on your part as to the work you did and what the bomb caused and the damage the bomb caused to end the war? Well, there certainly was. uh, A number of people that uh, knew what was going to be done with that bomb, there were about five of them uh, threatened to go to Drew Pearson at the time and uh, reveal what was happening here and, Mm -hmm. and what this bomb was going to do and how many people it would kill. But those people, uh, I think they got transferred somewhere up in the Aleutian Islands because uh, no because one Because that's wanted, what happened to you back then if you had no one loose wanted, lips. No <laughs> one wanted to have, have the thing sprung before at the time. Sure. So, uh, but uh, we knew that the, the impending invasion of Japan, it was estimated might cost close to a million American lives. Mm-hmm. So we were working hard to find a way to stop this war and to uh, save those lives. And that, that's what prompted us to uh, work almost day and night on this thing. We also knew that Germany uh, was working on a bomb, and so was Japan. So we were in, felt we were in competition with them and uh, a race to the finish sort of thing. So we, we worked uh, very hard uh, to get this uh, a bomb t- tested, which we did at Trinity. It was called in, at Alamogordo, New Mexico. And uh, fortunately, uh, uh, we were way ahead of the Germans and the Japanese, it turned out. But we didn't know that at the time. Sure. Dan Gillespie is with us on News Talk 630 WBMQ. Uh, served in World War II. Helped uh, work on the uh, the bomb that was eventually dropped on Nagasaki. The I'm, I'm trying to imagine watching that test take place and knowing that you were trying to keep your work a secret with as, as large an explosion as that must have been. Um, as you said, there were some who were transferred out of there uh, far away from the project in order to help keep uh, this a secret. Uh, are you amazed in retrospect that it was able to be kept secret, this type of work was kept secret from uh, the American people and especially from our enemies at the time? Well, it's it's not... True that we didn't that we kept the secret because mm-hmm. you might uh, remember the name of Klaus Fuchs, mm-hmm. who was a spy uh, for Russia. That's right. And uh, uh, Stalin knew all about our bomb, mm-hmm. unbeknownst to Harry Truman when they met at Potsdam. So uh, it 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 wasn't a, a truly well kept secret as far as uh, the Russians were concerned. But uh, that didn't stop us or deter us from uh, using the bomb. When And Harry Truman was the one that made that gutsy decision that mm-hmm. we should use it and, uh, and let, let uh, the Japanese know that we had more bombs. Actually, we only had one more, mm-hmm. but they didn't have to know that. They didn't that. know that, yeah. <laughs> At the time. At the end of your work, uh, very quickly, you got a, a, a very special letter of recommendation from a very important man, and that was uh, Robert Oppenheimer himself, didn't you? Yes, I. Uh, that's the pride of, of my uh, working experience. Uh, he, he wrote this letter, and of course, uh, many others got it, uh, but uh, he also personalized it. Uh, and the last part of it says, your ability in electrochemistry and in general chemical work has made you a very valuable research man. It is hoped that you will continue in scientific work. Well, I did just that mm-hmm. uh, when I was uh, discharged from the Army. I went to University of Michigan and got a master's degree then in chemical engineering and used that uh, experience to uh, work on, on uh, chemical engineering types of, of projects uh, for 
the company I worked for, which was called Door Oliver. Mm -hmm. It was a process equipment company. And I guess you couldn't have anything better on your resume or, or reference sheet than uh, than Robert Oppenheimer. That must have uh, No, that's a pretty good name to have on, Absolutely. Your, uh, on your sheet. Dan Gillespie, thank you for your service uh, during the war and for what you did. And uh, really appreciate your time this morning. This has been very special to me personally and uh, really enjoyed hearing your story. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.